I'm Richard Hall, I'm Chairman of Zenith, and I'm joined by Matt Wilton, who is our Commercial Consulting Director. Hello, everyone. Um, I'll start with a brief summary of what's coming up at the November Congress, and then Matt will present on latest market developments, and we'll finish with some questions on everything you'd like to ask. Uh, do submit your questions at any time. I'm pleased to say we've already got one. So, on to our next Global Bottled Water Congress. It's our 10th. And it's on the 12th to the 14th of November in Nashville in the United States. Uh, it's alongside the U.S. Bottled Water Industry Trade Show and the U.S. Vending Industry Trade Show. Um, it's kindly sponsored by Aptar and Bericap and NSF. The full program and booking details are on the Zenith International website. And discounted rates are still available until the end of next week. Um, we're trying to ensure over time that we cover all the main uh, markets for bottled water. Uh, for 2013, our theme is Force of Nature. Uh, we've got one and a half days of conference and then a day of detailed market briefings, also a gala dinner and uh, the Global Bottled Water Awards. Uh, the conference sessions will cover um, some premium water case studies, uh, how to enter the U.S. market with a North America regional overview. There will be a world view of water from companies from all around the world, attracting new consumers, some innovation presentations, and some investment commentary. And then the last day covers um, some market data briefings on the U.S. and global market, including flavored, enhanced, HOD, and POU. We have speakers from all around the world, global producers, uh, Nestle Tata, regional producers from Brazil to China with Indonesia and Poland and others in between, multiple industry representatives and advisors, as well as some industry suppliers. So that's the Congress. We've really got some extraordinarily good speakers and very wide market coverage. Do hope that many of you will be able to make it. Lots more questions coming in, so do ask away. Um, I'm now going to hand over to Matt, who will talk about the global market, and then we'll come on to your questions. Many thanks, Richard, and hello, everyone. So um, I'm going to take us through the latest trends and analysis within the global uh, water market. Um, this is information collected as part of Zenith's annual tracking of bottled water markets worldwide. Um, for those of you who don't know, we track um, approximately 90 global markets and report back all the key statistics, facts, and figures that, um, that we'll look at today and at the Congress. So kicking off with the um, volume picture, we see a situation of continued really very significant and healthy growth in the market, which currently stands at approximately or approaching 290 billion litres um, and is up 7.1% in the latest year. Um, that 7.1% very much in line with some of the growth that's been seen in in the most recent years, 2010, 2011, and really the market's showing no, so, no, no sign rather of slowing down in the near future. From a um, segment perspective, where's the growth and where's, who's, uh, which has been gaining share? Ultimately, it's a market where 50% is, is within the still to 10 litre um, bracket but that the share gain continues to be within the still bulk um, over 10 litres. Um, and later on in this presentation, we'll look at some of the reasons why it's the bulk markets which are growing their share. From a trends perspective, um, what we've seen um, in 2012 and throughout 2013, well, ultimately, now the, the, the volume globally for bottled water has surpassed carbonates. Um, and very much is a category that continues to be driven by volume. Uh, although we don't have pricing information in this presentation, we'll go into more price and value um, data uh, in Nashville, but ultimately we're seeing prices remaining low um, and private label continues to apply pressure, particularly in the developed markets um, in North America, in West Europe, for example. The market remains fragmented. Uh, the big four account for about 25% of volume. Um, so alongside the big four, we see some really now very established regional players. 
thinking about Swahaha and Santori in um, Asia Pacific, others such as San Benedetto in Europe. Of course, the environment remains an important concern, um, although affordability continues to be a key driver of purchase. Health and hydration remain relevant, but also there is ongoing challenge um, through innovation in other healthy soft drinks, be that um, carbonates with low or no sugar or, or calories, um, also areas such as juices, functional drinks, um, coconut waters, and, and, and the smaller but emerging segments. Um, and as I said earlier, still uh, bulk water over 10 litres remains a key driver. Um, and what this really reflects is the importance of markets, uh, particularly in Asia Pacific, um, where um, ultimately the municip uh, municipal supply, water supply remains inadequate and therefore the demand for bulk continues to grow. And this is very much reflected in the next slide, which looks at um, regional performance comparing 2007 to 2012. So we see um, on the right, the 2012 picture, our 288 billion litre market um, split down. And as with um, most recent years of, of our tracking study, we see Asia Pacific growing in prominence. So it's gained um, 10 share points um, since 2007 and continues to do so. Africa is also gaining share. Um, of course, it should be said that this is often much lower base um, and it remains quite small but is um, nudging up towards the 4 to 5% mark um, in terms of share. Um, and obviously, conversely then, the more developed markets of West Europe and North America um, are at best holding or at worst losing share in the global market. Uh, this next chart um, presents the regional trends slightly differently um, and hopefully a little more graphically. And, and it's quite interesting in that um, on the horizontal axes, um, just to explain the chart for a second, we see um, per capita consumption in litres per person um, in 2012. And on the vertical axis, we see volume growth. And this enables us, from a more holistic um, perspective, to group together uh, regions in terms of their overall performance. The bigger the bubble, um, the bigger the market volume, based on 2012. And we see really three quite distinct groups um, or territories emerging. Um, the first is Asia Pacific and Africa, which we characterize here at Zenith as high potential and, and areas where really the opportunity needs to be explored further. Um, high potential because ultimately there's low consumption on a per person basis, but the markets are either large or in high growth. In the middle, we um, have another um, segmentation which is more about growth and consumption so we, we would see this as an area of potential investment uh, ultimately where there's good consumption per person but room to grow and overall uh, the market's in good shape and then finally um, we have West Europe and North America at the bottom right of the slide um, and again um, in terms of Zenith segmentation uh, we see this as a high consumption low growth um, set of markets and ultimately from a, an investment strategy we would, we would characterize this as um, an area to either hold share or um, an area where acquisition to growth um, is potentially the way forward. We have a little data here on the USA market, um, more to follow in Nashville. And actually, the, the picture for the US um, in 2012 is incredibly positive, um, up 5.4% in volume terms, um, a 34 billion litre market, so um, obviously uh, huge in terms of overall size, but a, a really good continuation of the growth scene in the last couple of years. Um, to give a couple of um, partial explanations for the growth, um, there's been good performance amongst some branded players. Um, the Sane continues to perform well, um, obviously the plant bottle helping to keep momentum with consumers. Um, elsewhere, um, small pack owned label um, has also contributed to the um, volume growth. Um, population trends also helping to provide some support. 
Uh, from a segment perspective, um, still, still water to two litres continues to dominate with 69.2% of the market, um, which in itself is, is interesting, but, but what it also does is characterise really the difference between a developed market such as the US, where um, often it's a lifestyle purchase that drives the market, um, um, in comparison to a, a developing market such as India or Indonesia, let's say, where we would expect um, the bulk um, still over uh, 10 litres to, um, to have the lion's share. Okay, so just to um, pull that together into a few final thoughts. Um, we're seeing developing regions as continuing to drive growth. Uh, urbanization and economic stability in, in Asia Pacific, in Africa, and also the Middle East providing support. Uh, water safety awareness um, and lack of mains water, of course, remain key drivers of growth in these markets, hence why we see bulk as so important. Um, we expect bulk to continue to grow at, at, at pace over the next five years. Uh, that being said, and, and really contributing to uh, quite a polarized market in some respects, we also can um, expect to see continued growth in small pack, um, mainly through health consciousness and also on the go and convenience, as, as mentioned earlier, uh, a lifestyle decision, um, but um, plenty of reasons to ex expect further growth there. Um, packaging, of course, innovation is, is key in terms of ensuring momentum, particularly in the developed markets. Um, and then, uh, final thought, um, further industry consolidation, well, we do expect this to continue. We're seeing uh, here at Zenith uh, a lot of activity when it comes to M&A, a lot of interest in terms of acquisition, um, and ultimately, um, we feel that larger companies can and will continue to look for smaller niche players to increase their capacity and their portfolio, particularly in developing markets. So that was it from me in terms of a, um, a market overview. Great. Thank you, Matt. Uh, we've got quite a lot of questions. Uh, three or four of them are all about, can you have copies of the presentation? And the answer is yes, we will send them to you. Uh, and um, that should come through fairly shortly to you. So we will try and make sure that um, the slides are available to you very soon. Um, we've had one question about estimated share of um, sparkling and home and office, and I hope we've answered that already in the slides. Um, question next about exports of bottled water. Um, is there a big export market? Um, Europe to the US, Asia, or Middle East? What about that? Um, no, I'll pick that up, Richard, if yeah. that's okay. Um, well, we have done, actually, um, some analysis into this um, using the data sets that we've got. Uh, and I guess, although there would be variation by markets, um, overall, globally, the last time we did the analysis, it was in the 2 to 3% um, bracket in terms of overall share of export. Uh, some of that, of course, exporting over quite large distances, Europe to US, but often um, it's export to neighboring countries, for example, France to Belgium. Yeah, I think that the really important thing is that water is perceived to be shipped around the world. The truth is that it's one or two remarkable brands uh, and it's not the total market, which is predominantly local. And when you think about it, it's a very um, heavy weight to value ratio for other than the premium brands. And it doesn't make economic sense to uh, ship large quantities other than for the most successful. Um, transport costs. Oh, there's a very good point about transport costs. What about transport costs? How, what, how important are they? I would say um, ongoing importance. Uh, clearly, um, relationship between the cost of fuel, and the cost of transportation, and the overall cost of goods um, is vital in terms of how um, companies can, can or don't manage their margins um, and it looks set to, set to continue. It's especially important for home and office delivered water and we find that there's a sort of a 50, 70 kilometer um, barrier to um, distribution common sense uh, for home and office delivered water so the, the route management and density is, is really important there. And it all depends on what happens to fuel prices and whether we find new fuels which become uh, more affordable. Um, how realistic to survive as a small niche player? 
the market seems to be dominated by a few players. Well, we found that actually it's quite fragmented, isn't it? Some markets are quite consolidated. Sure. Um, I mean, there was a stat in, in the slides just then. Um, probably only about 25% of, of the overall global market is, is dominated by the big four. Uh, and I'm sure there are plenty, or I know there are plenty of examples of smaller niche local players doing well. Um, I guess, as with, with any food and drink category, um, to an extent, brand identity, um, product differentiation, innovation, all important. Okay, next one was about rankings of UK water companies, Highland Spring and Danone. Interesting one, that, because uh, some of the figures are very close. Uh, Evian is the... Um, is, is a very strong brand uh, across the um, whole of the market, but Highland Spring um, is also uh, just out in front in 2012. Um, and uh, so I think that we may see some vying for leadership in the UK uh, coming up this year. I'm not sure quite where that will end up, but uh, th those are our figures for 2012. Um, for the Asia Pacific market, what's the projection for private bulk? Not quite sure what private bulk is because I mean there are the the, the tankers that you get uh, from the municipal sources that are distributed, um, but uh, oh, there's another question. Was that about bulk? Um, private la well, private labels in bulk. Okay, there we are. Private labels in bulk. Thank you for answering that. Um, that was the question. Um, I would say that private label is way behind the curve outside uh, Europe and it's even taking, it's, it's grown quite substantially in North America. We think that it's going to gain share overall um, because retailers are becoming brands in their own right. But I think that in a lot of Asia it's, it's often just um, almost unbranded uh, public water alternatives. Yeah, certainly, um, uh, without the, the, the data at our fingertips, but we do see huge variation by market in terms of, in terms of the role of, um, of private label. Um, sorry, I should actually, on the UK, I think a Volvic, when you add in flavoured uh, Volvic, I think the volume for uh, Volvic um, plus Volvic touch of fruit is higher than um, Highland Spring overall, but in plain water it's Highland Spring. Um, just going on, uh, comment on the recent M&A activity, DS Waters, Eden Springs, others. Um, well, DS Waters um, remains an independent company and um, seems to be making uh, a series of, of consolidating acquisitions in home and office in the States, Eden Springs likewise in Europe. I mean, these are two strong leaders getting stronger and perhaps investing more in, in systems and distribution den density to be more effective than others are and um, may, may be more powerfully so. But I think that these are um, important markets with room for more, um, but they are not easy to provide the service, to provide the value to consumers, especially in a very competitive environment. Are there other names coming up, um, perhaps more in packaged water than in uh, HOD at the moment? Um, sorry to cut across you, Richard. I've just noticed a couple of other questions, um, more about the information that we've got, such as do we have other countries, do we, can we provide regional trends, do we have um, information on water with a hint of flavour, um, etc. The answer to those questions, all of them, is yes. Um, I think the thing is to um, pick those questions off, um, up offline after this call. Um, so thank you for those and we will respond. Okay, next, um, let's see, are the sparkling ice type waters uh, popular in Europe? Um, yes, uh, sparkling flavoured waters have done very well, so have still flavoured waters, and um, not just flavoured with fruit, but uh, teas as well, um, and I think that sparkling ice, and we've got uh, the, the founder of sparkling ice coming to uh, talk at the Congress, um, that's been one of the great success stories of the last uh, few years in the U.S. market. Um, two or more hundred million dollars um, of value being created and generated there. And we haven't seen quite the newcomer in the last year or two uh, like that in Europe. Um, Glasso Vitamin Water has um, uh, done well in some countries. Um, there are other brands around the European market. The trend is there. 
the, the brand building is more challenging. Retailers are sometimes doing quite a good job themselves, so there's own label competition there. Now, we're running out of time. It's, it's 2.20, and we ought to finish there. I don't think there's anything really... There are one or two questions we haven't answered. I do apologize for that. We'll try and get back to those of you that have asked them separately, but I guess we should close there. So thank you all for attending. Hope that you can come to the Congress, where you will hear um, great stuff from really many of the market leaders and a lot of the other leading innovators. So it's some um, thanks from me and from... Many thanks from me, too.